We're gamers, we like games, we play games because we're gamers, we got no lives, we've got jobs, this is our hub. Hi fucking love everybody, and this is Fet Bub with another fetish movie review. Today's movie is Thor Ragnarok. Now, I recently saw this uh, a couple weeks ago, and I have to say it's pretty awesome. It's a very good movie, and I, I really enjoy it. So, Just to get that out of the way, so you guys know the personal emotional bias to it. However, I am still going to grade this based off of things, or problems, or issues. Now, I am no, no astute film critic nor am I trained in any cinematic arts or any uh, cinematic schooling. I'm just a half-ass entertainer talking about shit he likes and a nerd. Let it be known, there are going to be some spoilers. Now what are we going to grade this movie on? As we did with the last one, we'll be grading on watchability, pacing, continuity, the effects, characters, the plot, both its originality as well as its truthfulness, at least its homage to source material, its presentation, its style, and overall entertainment value. So with every review I like to begin with some of the good, go into some things that I thought were a bit troublesome, and then finish off with some other strong things, give it a score, and then offer my recommendation whether I would or not. One of the first things I think you have to talk about with it being a Marvel movie is the effects. The effects are great. Marvel, especially with, with Disney behind it and everything else, it is amazing. It got the same level that Star Wars and a lot of these other movies have, especially the cosmic Marvel has got some fantastic effects. They are amazing to watch. No matter if the, if the movie's dull plot-wise or character-wise, it is always going to be visually entertaining. And it's something that this did not fail to deliver on. In fact, I think it went above and beyond, and that alone was good. It also, I'll admit, I'm not as well known about the, the Ragnarok story in Marvel itself, and I'm not as well versed in Ragnarok from the mythological standpoint, but there were certain things I did recognize from both within it. I'm glad to see that it brought Thor out into the cosmic end of Marvel like he has been when it comes to his comic book counterpart, and certain elements like the uh, the wolf that is brought forth, and uh, a few other things. Those are you know the undead rising. Those are those are a lot more like the mythological story. So some of those Easter eggs are really cool too. And I mean, come on, everybody who knows, you cannot say that those undead soldiers did not remind you of the dropper. I was thinking of just the whole time <laughs> through that scene. Another good thing that I thought was the presentation, which kind of goes more with the effects, but it was presented in a very good way. It was a very good package. It it obviously didn't take itself too seriously in... It realized it was a comic book movie. However, it still took the serious parts that needed to be taken seriously, seriously. It still was adult about it, and it, it wasn't just cheap humor. It wasn't just cheap action. It had weight. It had some pretty serious stakes, so the, the presentation was pretty good. It was serious enough without being too serious, and it was lighthearted enough without being too lighthearted. I, I thought it was really good. That goes into the style, too. The style was amazing. But I think that's more of a style than presentation. Its overall presentation was great. It looked great, sounded great, everything was great. Now, with that, there are a couple little things that I think could have been worked on. Mostly when it comes to the plot, some things that happened kind of either didn't make sense, they kind of just threw at us at certain points, and while it didn't affect the pacing too bad, it definitely did kind of throw you out for a few moments, like, oh, oh, that's happening. Kind of the, the Helm's Deep motif when it came to the the underground kind of resistance and the underground hiding, the, the, the Asgardians hiding from, I believe her name's Helena, or her sister, the villain of this movie. That kind of reminded me of a bit of Lord of the Rings and that, and it kept going back and forth between they're hiding away, they're in the city like a resistance, there, there wasn't a whole lot so it really kind of threw things off. Another thing too with the plot, 
was some of the things that happened seemed to be a little bit too perfect, a little too plot conveniency, but of course it's a movie, it's going to happen. Some scenes like where the fighters want to revolt, they you know, they talk about it and they don't, and then when Thor needs to escape, all of a sudden everybody who wants to help him escape know the fighters want to revolt, so they get them to revolt and they get them these weapons and then there's a revolt and it leads to everybody conveniently escaping on a ship and no one finding these Grinch gladiators escaped. So that I couldn't get behind. That was a little bit weird and a few continuity issues. One being Scourge's character. I wasn't sure, and he was done pretty well by Carl Urban. I don't, you don't usually ever hear that kind of Cockney accent come out of Carl Urban, not in the film anyway. And he, he did a good job with what he was given, however it felt like he was kind of written more as a plot device of, well the plot needs, you know, the one guy, who, he needed to be the Grima worm tongue. he needed to also be the redeeming soldier, and he, he wasn't given a whole lot of whole lot of consistency and another thing that really was weird of the continuity was Loki especially towards the third act where Loki gets knocked out because he tries to betray Thor. Why would he try and betray Thor at that point? He has no reason to betray Thor. He tries to betray Thor. They subdue Loki and the gladiators find him and he takes them back and then all of a sudden Loki's now trying to fight to save Asgard and then Loki kind of does something. He goes in and gets this the monster from the beginning to show up and it's huge and it's like okay Loki has to be dead but then somehow Loki magically ends up upon the ship at the end but just there's so much that's just what <laughs> what is going on and that those things while they weren't extremely bad I definitely would give them just like half a point for it because certain parts were good um, the story was nice and for the most part it was consistent but there were a couple times when I had plot point plot point itis and plot convenience itis and a couple times where it's just like oh, okay I don't follow where did that how did he get there how is that okay I guess cool this is how it is of course this doesn't affect the watchability it's very watchable I want to see it again I'm excited for when it comes out on video I'm excited to watch it I wouldn't mind seeing it again in theaters it is amazing so it is still extremely watchable and like I said earlier, the pacing wasn't too bad. It got the pacing okay. It didn't really affect the pacing too much because it still ran fairly smooth. But the best thing in this movie were the characters, which I think is what makes it so strong. What I like about a good movie, a good movie, any visual medium, any story, is pretty much nothing without its characters, but especially when it's a visual medium, you need the characters. And the characters are shit, the story is shit. The story doesn't matter if you don't care about the characters, and they did the characters well. Uh, Hulk was entertaining. They got one of the Valkyrie to be in this, and, and I feel bad for not remembering her name, but she was a great character. Kind of a pseudo love interest, like like more of a sexual romantic tension with Thor, but like a warrior's admiration, but also could moan each other kind of thing, and I'm like, I like that. I like that more mature kind of the tensions there, but you're more, you don't have to make out at the end. And Thor, they did really, really well as fleshing out his character. Loki, always a great character to watch. Some of the other side characters are pretty good. Their faults and that aside. And of course, uh, the, uh, the Game Master, Jeff Goldblum's character was great. It was classic Jeff Goldblum, I love watching it. So of course, the characters made this the most entertaining that it could be. So its entertainment value is pretty strong. And to be honest, with that all being said, I'd say this movie probably gets about an eight, eight and a half uh, out of ten. It's it's strong characters, uh, a good, fun story, pretty entertaining. It's got its flaws here and there, but what good movie doesn't? And to be honest, I would very much recommend you watch it. Just watch it multiple times. See it with friends. See it with family. Uh, it's good for a date, you know, a date. And then I would definitely recommend buying it. Those are my thoughts on it. I'd like to hear yours. Say it down in the comments. Have you liked this video? Give that like button a nice good game on its top little butt, of course. You know, a little slap, little little thing. Make sure, though, to check down in the links below. I've got my other reviews, other fetish content, as I like to call it. You can also find the rest of the multi-platform monarchs down there.
as well as a link to my Patreon. I really appreciate any and all support. But the biggest support can be subscribing. I appreciate every new subscriber I get, and I appreciate every subscriber I have now. You mean a lot, and that's why I'm trying to diversify my content and really expand and work to make something great. At least for you, at least good for you, because you, know, you guys subscribe to me. You guys said, yeah, I will get notifications of this guy putting stuff out there, and that means a lot. So thank you again so much. This is a great movie. I hope you enjoyed it, and you guys have a good fucking day. Bye.